You got your Mac and Mac guys. John McMullen and Jody McDonald here with you on Birds 365. Brad Motti from the Associated Press, uh, lead National Football League writer for the AP, going to jump in with us coming up in less than 20 minutes from now. I right, uh, Before we went to break last question, I asked Matt Manicharian was about uh, the defensive end from Georgia Tech, who the NFL invited, one of only 17 players to get invited to the draft, and you know who most of them are quarterbacks and Carter and B. John Robinson and, and the uh, guys that we've talked about in the top half of the NFL draft. And that name kind of jumped off the page because uh, the guys that we've been talking about as the potential Eagle selections, edge guys who would uh, be there if uh, uh, Wilson and um, a kid from Alabama are both off the board. Uh, man, they got some high ranking edge guys. You talk about importance of position. Um, we use pro football focus as a reference all the time. Uh, a lot of times, John and I agree with it. Sometimes we disagree with it. It's not the Bible, but it's a pretty good source of uh, information and uh, rankings and ratings and the like. They don't have this kid from Georgia Tech in the top 10 edge pass rushers, not even top 10 at one position. They don't have them. But then again, Marlon's little brother, uh, Tuli Tui Pelotu. Tuli, yeah. Tuli's a good player. Right. Yeah. Is the 10th ranked edge player. And they've got him number 42 on their big board. So of the top 42 players in the draft, they think there's going to be 10 edge guys taken. You talk about positional importance. The NFL relies heavily on guys coming off the edge and getting to the quarterback, as you said earlier, not just getting to the quarterback, getting to the quarterback quickly. You got to be able to do it in the blink of an eye these days. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of, of teams taking edge pass rushers. If 10 are off the board in the first 42 picks, Johnny Mac. Yeah. That's the cliche around the league now is uh, you either get the quarterback or you get to the quarterback. That's how you win, one or the other. If you don't have the quarterback, you damn well better get to the quarterback. Uh, and it's great when you have both, like the Eagles had last season, but they came up just short, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I mean, one of the things about Keon White, I mean, a lot of people have him graded as a defensive tackle, number one. Maybe that impacts things. Same thing with Thule. You brought up uh, Marlon's brother, Marlon Tui Pelotu. A lot of people have him uh, as a defense. He played more defensive tackle in college than he played, but a lot of people project him to be an edge rusher. So you have that sort of, and sometimes it's good. You can do both like Brandon Graham, and that's even better uh, for long-term success in the NFL. Um, so sometimes that clouds uh, people's gradings, but you know, the NFL tends to get a better feel for things. And there are players that the NFL likes more than the media likes or the draft Knicks or whatever. And, you know, maybe he's that guy. Maybe, maybe they got a clear indication that um, teams in the NFL like him better than most people think. And they don't always get it right. As you right. said, we had this, uh, We've had this green room type of stuff in the past. Um, but usually when guys fall out, it's for other reasons, you know, whether it's off the field, injury related. Um, Nicobe Dean's an example. Did, he didn't show up. Was he invited last year? I don't remember. I don't, I don't watch invited, it. So. But if he had been invited, I wouldn't have bat batted an eye. Yeah, he, uh, he most people thought he'd round. be a, a, a first round pick. Yep. Um and he ended up going in the third round, mainly because of injury issues. Um, uh, so it happens. But if you get the invite, they got a clear indication that they think you're going to be pretty highly drafted. And I did double check uh, with Pro Football Focus to see if they considered White as a defensive tackle. If they did, they didn't put him in the top 10 defensive tackles either. So... I got just it jumped out at me because uh, I had not on any of the mocks that I had been seeing having them as seeing them as a first round pick. And I did go specifically to pro football focus because they ranked the players at each position uh, and his name was nowhere to be found. So we'll see exactly. Our buddy, uh, our buddy, uh, 
Rick Saratella had him early in the process. Because I got Rick's list. First uh, round? Uh, he had him at defensive tackle. Now, this is one of his early lists. I just keep it on my desk because to, to look at the list. Early on, hmm. he had him. Ranked as what as, number defensive tackle? Number five. And again, and this that, that, I, I that's, printed that's this. That's not going to get you into the first round. I printed this at, on February 28th, so I'm sure it's uh, – I'm looking at the date. So I'm sure it's changed since then. Um, but, yeah, at the time he had him as a second-round pick, um, the fifth defensive tackle. And he's undersized. He'd be undersized. You know, he's 280. So, you know, maybe he's one of those guys who could play inside and outside. I don't know a ton about him. I haven't done a ton of work on Keon White because his name hasn't name hasn't come up with the Eagles. Um, I've looked at uh, Tui uh, Tuli Tui Peloto a little bit more, and he's yeah he's he's a defensive tackle that a lot of people project to edge, and he played some edge, so he could do both uh, as well. All right, John, I want to put the draft aside for just five minutes, promise. And then we'll get back to the draft. We got Rob Marty uh, joining us coming up in, in less than 15 minutes from now. Um, the Eagles signing of free agents, the uh, lottery tickets that the Eagles have taken flyers on during this offseason. Uh, we know that uh, they're putting X amount of dollars aside to get the Jalen Hurts contract done. That's why they haven't been aggressive in going out and signing guys with resumes uh, to replace guys that they lost on the defensive side who had resumes uh, added to those resumes last year as pretty damn good players. And we know what guys we're referring to linebacker safeties uh, and a pretty big defensive tackle who got the most money on the open market this off season. And the Eagles haven't, indulged a lot of money to replace those guys. So I want to ask you a question about the uh, safety net. Uh, You can call them uh, draft proofing guys. I, again, uh, semantical debate. It's more like a safety net for me. Doesn't draft proof anything. Uh, You you got a body there, but it doesn't mean you, you shouldn't be looking to get better in the draft at a specific position, but the free agent defensive signings of Philadelphia Eagles have had, that they've signed just to one-year contracts, either right at the veteran minimum or maybe slightly above, but certainly not major investments and not not all guaranteed money, under a million dollars for guaranteed money. Here are the guys who I put on the list. Uh, Street at defensive tackle, uh, Morrow at linebacker, the two safeties, Evans and Edmonds, and we'll even put Greedy Williams, even though we know he's going to be a backup uh, behind the two starting cornerbacks of the Eagles. Out of those five that they've added on the defensive side, Johnny Mack, I'm telling you that one of them will be Kaiser White, even though they made less money because they actually paid Kaiser a little bit to come in and be the other linebacker. Yeah, he got, he got way more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but a one-year deal came in, got the job done, uh, and then departed and went his own separate way thereafter. And one of these guys is going to be Jaquaski Tart, that uh, he may come in with a little uh, a pomp and circumstance and was a starter elsewhere and came in, and despite uh, neither John McMullen or Jody McDonald liking him, some of our streamers liking him, he did not make the Philadelphia Eagles. And by the way, did he ever land with another team during the year? This no, situation? no. I, no. I think Jeff Kwaski is still out there waiting for that call uh, to get a shot to join a National Football League team. But uh, the key being, didn't make the team. Didn't go anywhere, so got no issues with the Eagles moving away from him. Out of the five defensive ads they had who got one-year contracts, which one has got the best chance to be Kaiser White, step in, start, have a pretty damn good year, and which one has got the best chance to be Jaquaski Tart? Uh, by September, we won't be uh, kicking his name around because he won't be here in Philadelphia. Um, the, the 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 best Kaiser White, and it's the same position is 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 Nicholas Morrow, Ma- mainly because there's opportunity, as you mentioned. Like Greedy Williams isn't going to play. Yeah, Contavious Street is, 
going to be a backup if he makes the team. Um, Nicholas Morrow, as of right now, they had to play a game today, and thank God they don't have to play a game today. He's a starting linebacker. He's Kaiser White. He's he's literally filling that role, and they don't have anybody else to fill that role unless you're really excited about Sean Bradley or Christian Ellis. Um, so he's got the best opportunity. Interesting, he got the least amount of money, too, of that group. Um, as far as Jaquaski tart I think Terrell Edmonds is a good player, but I think um, – Justin Evans is a better fit for what the Eagles want to do. You're still playing the fit game, huh? The better uh, fit over the better player. That Because fit is a big deal with this scheme and this philosophy. And I don't get it. And I don't get the fit. So, I mean, you know, you, if you're pounding a square peg in the round hole, it ain't going in, Jody. I know that. Um, and if you got him playing cover too, you're not going to look good. So I think Justin Evans has a chance to be a bigger impact than Terrell Edmonds if he stays healthy. And that's a big question mark. He missed three stinking seasons. But he did play 15 games last year. So he 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 showed perhaps he was over the hump. Now, I will also say, look, I think they should draft Branch if he's there late first round, early second round. And be done with it all, and have that's a perfect fit for what you want to do. Um, but you know the draft is going to be a big part of it as well. But if you ask me today, that would be my thoughts. Um, I I know where you're coming from. We've been talking about since they signed both of the two safeties to minimal contracts. Evans uh, a little bit more for uh, the non-fit safety than the fit safety. He, and I said this the day that he was signed, and I'm going to cling to it. And maybe it's wishful thinking on my part. We we know that the system that they well I shouldn't say that we think that the system that they're going to run this year on defense is going to be very similar to the one that they've run the last couple of years. But it is Sean Desai, and it's not Jonathan Gannon. We know that Gannon was a fit the system kind of guy. He really worked hard. And how he did him a solid by going out and acquiring the type of players who fit exactly what he wanted to do on defense. Maybe this guy's going to be a little bit different. And maybe he's going to be a little bit more flexible. And maybe he isn't going to be as stringent as Jonathan Gannon was that here's the defense we play and we have to find the exact type of players who play that type of defense. Maybe Desai will be a little bit more open-minded, and maybe he has got the flexibility built within his system to have different type of players and ask them to do different things. That's the only reason why I'm not as uh, as, as stringent as you well, are on the. I, I would say fit. here's here's why because the head coach told me it's going to be the same because Sean Desai, when he was a chance when he had a chance to be a defensive coordinator, played the same scheme in Chicago. Uh, because, but do you think all Fangio defenses are created exactly the same? No, because different. It's the same thing as I said with with uh, Shane Steichen and, and Nick Sirianni. It's different because people are different. It's different in the moments, and that's why I I just broke my own rule. If you remember, I was going to say philosophy. The philosophy isn't changing. People are different. You you're different than me. I'm different than you. Even if we have the same plan, it's going to look a little bit different because we're not the same people. Same as Shane Steichen versus Nick Sirianni. Same offense looked a little bit different, arguably better with Shane. But, you know, a lot of reasons would go into that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, as I said, third and 13, you know, people might like it more. Maybe he is a little bit more aggressive. But the philosophy isn't changing. Uh, it isn't changing. Um, and again, the head coach has said it. Um, and I don't think Sean Desai is going to walk in the door and say, you know what? I don't want to play this deep. That's it. I kind of wish he did, but <laughs> I don't think he's going to. Um, and so that's number one. And then the second part is uh, I, I, I don't necessarily agree. See, I think it was turned on its head. 
Like a lot of people thought Jonathan Gannon changed schemes from year one to year two. No, he didn't. How he got him? How he got him better pieces to fit his schemes? Yeah. So you know he couldn't play a lot of fifty bronze last year because he didn't have the personnel to do it. Not last year, the year before. Um, and he did things a little bit differently because guess what? You can't play like Hassan Reddick's on the field when it's Gerard Avery. Mm -hmm. You can't play um, the way he wanted to play if if Jordan Davis and Linball Joseph aren't on the roster and you're forcing Javon Hargrave to play nose tackle. Um, you can't play the same way. So he was different in year one, not as successful, but he was different in year one than year two. And yet, if Sean Desai's only option at safety is Terrell Edmonds, because he's so much better as a football player than Justin Evans, which I don't know if he is or isn't, then he's going to play Terrell Edmonds. But, you know, it's going to be, there's going to be problems. Like when Gennard Avery was out there, there's going to be problems because you're going to be playing him out of position. And you're going to be asking him to do things that he doesn't do that well. And unfortunately, safety is a 100% position, typically. Um, so it will be a bigger issue at safety than it was at for Gerard Avery. And when you say 100%, if uh, people didn't pick up on what you meant, you mean they don't... They don't they, leave the field. They, they, you're out there on the field. You're yeah. out there on the field. They're not pulling you off for it. Uh, and, yeah, either I'm a bigger Edmonds fan than you are or I'm less of a uh, fan of uh, the, the other possibility that they have. Yeah, I think he's going to play the better football player, and, and he'll make it work within his system. Uh, we shall see. It's one of the intriguing things for the Eagles camp when it opens up, unless, of course, they get Brian Branch, and then both of the guys get to – one of them will be gone, and one of them will be sitting on the bench behind Brian Branch if they get him in the first round. He's John McMullen. I'm Jody McDonald. We're hoping to talk to Rob Marty from the Associated Press, the Marty Man, scheduled to join us next here on Birds 365.